is Jared Michael, and I'm here with Chevy Teeter. We're in Southwood getting ready for an exciting evening of high school football. It's October 14th, and tonight's matchup is between the Southwood Knights and the Tippecanoe Valley Vikings. The Tippecanoe Valley Vikings have had a great turnaround this season. The current record for the Vikings is 3-5. However, this does not reflect the change the team has made. Starting off the season with an 0-5 season, the Vikings have had three consecutive wins um, last week against the Wabash Apaches, which was a pretty challenging uh feet for the Vikings. I know the Vikings have been preparing hard to keep their winning streak alive, so when they face off against the Knights tonight, they're definitely going to be ready. The Southwood Knights have not faced the Vikings in the past two years, so I'm ready to see how the game goes against common opponents, and overall, the Knights stacked up better than the Vikings. I'm curious to see how they, things are going to go tonight, whether they will look for a quick victory against the Vikings or it will be a battle. Um, definitely going to be something different uh, in this game tonight. Some just quick stats. Uh, averaging rushing yards per game, the Vikings are at 154 and Southwood 139.8. Again, that's not reflecting Valley's change. Um, beginning of the season, they were very, very pass heavy. Um, uh, passing yards per game, Southwood is at 247.8 yards per game, where the Vikings are at 74.9. Um, that is reflective of the recent turnaround. Uh, points per game is definitely Southwood leading at 34.6, to where the Vikings only have 14.8 uh, points per game. Just some quick little leaders that you can be looking out for in this game is number 24, Matt Cox for Southwood, um, leading passing yards per game, or I mean rushing yards per game. For Valley, DJ Heckman, number 12 uh, at 75.4. Um, passing yards per game, number five, Alec Craig, 73.9 for the Vikings. And number seven, Carson Blair at 242.3 yards number. per game. That is a huge number passing uh, for the quarterback of Wabash. I mean, not Wabash, I'm sorry, uh, Southwood Knights. Uh, total yards per game, again, Alec Cricket, 98.1. When you compare that to number seven, Carson Blair at 271.9. That is ridiculous comparison right there. Yes, it is. Um, points per game is Jared Doonesbury in the lead for the Vikings at 4.3. And for Southwood, number 22, Preyton Trexler at 11.4. Against common opponents, um... The Southwood is in the lead at 2-2, two to two, Valley 1-3. to three. However, North Miami and Northfield were both losses for both teams. Uh, Whitco was the first week that the Vikings took over a uh, new coach with Jeff Shriver, and Southwood was able to win, Valley was able to loss. Um, both teams did have a win against Wabash, though. Some other really quick stats here. We are at Southwood, and so far this year they are 2-2 two and two at defending their home turf. The Vikings, though, are uh, one and three against away opponents. Um, league games, so conference, this is the conference matchup for these two teams. Uh, Valley is, they're tied up, but however, non-league games, Southwood is in the lead three to one, and uh, Vikings are one and three against non-league opponents. So, they're about ready to get things started here as we prepare for kickoff. Back to receive is number 12, Deshaun Heckman. Parker Mays will kick off for Southwood. And it will come down to Tiffany Bowman and bring it up for the Vikings. This time they will be a winner. Tanner Trapini and the freshman brings it across the field to about the 35 yard line. Great job by the freshman there on that return. It's <laughs> official, folks. Here we have number five, Alec Craig, the senior quarterback under uh, center. And that'll be a quick little handoff to number 12, Deshaun Heckman, senior. Also, Valley's, again, lead rusher, um, 
in recent games, Deshaun has been averaging over 100 yards per game, well over 100 yards in the past two games. Uh, last against um, Wabash, I believe he was at about 174 yards. And that's a very big improvement from earlier in the year where it was closer to 70 yards a game. Exactly. Again, that's another little play uh, using number 12, Deshaun Heckman. Uh, going to be definitely utilizing him a lot in this game, it would appear. Maybe they're just using him to throw off, um, get a pass out to, uh, say, Jared Dusenberry or something of the like. Now, the last couple games I've seen Isaac Randall come out as a receiver, we haven't seen much from him, but what from what I've heard that there's a little bit of talent there, so hopefully we can see what he's capable of. That'll bring up fourth down for the Vikings. They're going for it. Number 44. And you know, this is a beautiful night for high school football. It's You can definitely tell it is fall right now. A um, little bit of chill in the air. I'm definitely uh, wondering how this game is going to go as the game goes on. That will be a handoff to number three, Cameron Parker, sophomore. You know, he's really has been able to prove himself since the ankle injury of Janoe Melanimi. Um, Janoe is back, but he's still not 100%. So, And you know, I've also heard that Janoe has been battling sickness so far this year. So it's great that we have a sophomore that's willing to step up and take that position and definitely do good and make the big plays like that conversion right there. And that'll be a fumble by number five, Alec Craig. It's not a good sign this early in the game, Jared. No, it is not, Chevy. Alec handing off to Cameron Parker again. And that's a good drive. So far, Cameron's been making great yardage here in this game. Now, Cameron's 5'8 and weighs 155 pounds. Smaller guy, but very solid. I know back in middle school in practice, when we were having contact practice, he actually separated my shoulder, Jared, so I know he can hit. <laughs> so bringing back a little bit of memory there if you were on Southwood's side. Yeah. That'll be a quick little pitch to Deshaun Heckman, number 12. Um, just not being able to do too good so far early on in this game. Fourth down here. We've got to wonder if they're going to bring out the punt squad. It looks like they are. Back to punt for the Vikings will be number 13, Jared Dusenberry, the senior. Uh, this is his first year punting, and so far I think he's done a pretty good job. That he has. That'll be a return by number 24, Matt Cox. Um, again, great leading player for Southwood so far. And that'll be the Vikings giving up their first drive uh, to the Southwoods, just not uh, Southwood Knights, just not quite able to do it. Now, due to the stats and everything and the way it sounds. Southwood's offense is very well, like, rounded and is a very good force to be reckoned with. You know, and I expect to see a lot of passing with that force to be reckoned with. And uh, not a whole lot of wind, very calm, calm night tonight. So uh, I'm, I'm a little worried here. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a great night, though, for freshman Cannon Trapiti at corner and sophomore uh, Cameron Parker if they can pull off the... 
big stops. And, and you know, I, I, along with that great night, um, since it is passing, you got to remember number 83, Devin Bandow, has done a great job with interceptions so far this year. So. Yeah, That'll be a handoff to number 21, Zach Ball. Uh, flag on the play, though. Yeah, that run was going for 20 yards. Probably have been a big and you know you can tell from this position that uh definitely in a good position spreading out the Vikings. Vikings were struggling with defense early on in the season, just lacking fundamentals overall, I would say. Um and they've definitely had to try to build that back up. And another thing they were lacking at the beginning of the season, Jared, they were lacking conditioning. I know the first game they were cramps, and it was all, all around, I would say, uh, just not even on defense. We, we were very unconditioned here. So, Quarterback number seven, Carson Blair, the junior, looking for the call there, wondering what he's going to do here. Quick little screen out to number 29, Jeffrey Finical, the senior. It looked like another stop from Devin Bandow. He's, he's the small force to be reckoned with on the Valley's team, that's for sure. Yes, he is. He, he is amazing the type of way he can move around for his size of 5'6", 122. The hits that he can put on kids. Oh, Quick pass to number 22, Peyton Trexler Jr. Six foot, and like I was saying, uh, Southwood is definitely good on hitting those passes, as you can tell from the stats earlier on in the game. We got it going, Bob. Run the clock, he said. You know, Valley's doing a pretty good job on stopping those runs like that, though. Yeah, they are. Um, that was a handoff to number 24, Matt Cox, the senior. And Valley's going to have to be continually good at stopping those runs if uh, they're not going to be able to stop the pass. Looks as though Southwood's trying to run down the clock here. Pass intended to number 20, Blake Martz, the senior. Southwood being very uh, spread out on their passing, just not picking one single receiver, which you can often see in high school football, um, sharing the ball around, which can be very deadly to uh, defense. Yeah, because once they start passing to those favorites, most of the time, most teams will key on that player. And with Southwood's strategy here, we could see some. I agreed. Uh, it'd be very hard to key on him. Long pass out to number 29, Jeffrey Finical, and that'll be a touchdown there for the Knights. Wide open. Uh, again, I don't think the Vikings have faced this type of offense at all this entire year. Yeah, this is the first pass-heavy offense that we've really faced this year, Jared. Number 11, Parker Mays, will be the kicker. Uh, he's a junior this year. And the kick is good for the Knights. That'll bring the score up 7-0. to 5.31 left to play in this first quarter. Casey, Casey, they play Rochester. He wanted to take 
Again, Southwood did kick off to the Vikings, and Vikings unable to score. Uh, let's hope this isn't how the entire game is going to go here. Because it won't be very pretty for the Vikings if it is, Jared. That's a, that's a good idea. That's an awesome idea. I think you want to do that. And the winner has to play Purdue. <laughs> <laughs> Again, back to kick for the Knights. Number 11, Parker Mays. Back to return for the Vikings. Number 12, Deshaun Heckman. Vikings have been struggling on special teams so far this year, I would say. That they have, Jared not able to really break those long ones like they've been wanting to. Good, solid, low boot by number 11. And that was a great return by the freshman, Jaden Conley. You know, I think Vikings are going to need uh, runs like that of great traveling after contact. Now, I've talked about Jaden Conley before. He's a very well-rounded player, and as he progresses through high school, he's going to he's going to be one of those players that Valley remembers. <laughs> That'll be Heckman is chipping away the yards just slowly but surely. And you know, I know to keep morale up, uh, talking to head coach Jeff Shriver for the Vikings, he said that they try to get each player to look at the play that's in front of them and not care about what's behind them. Um, whether it was a huge, uh, great play by the Vikings or if it was a big upset uh, like that score that the Southwood had um, that can be really detrimental to a team's morale, just just forget that and move on to the next play and try to give your 100% the next play and then the next play and the next play. It's really smart strategy, focusing on the here and now, just... Not letting the past get at you. Yep. And that'll be a flag. That'll be on the Vikings. That'll be an illegal procedure against the Vikings. Alec Craig rolling out, pass to number 40, Bryce Webster. He's a junior. Nice play there. Nice play. Southwood was signaling that it was out of bounds. Looks like the refs disagreed. And that'll move the chain gang. You know, maybe since we're going, we're, Valley's playing a very pass-heavy offense, maybe we're going to get to see the more pass-heavy offense of the, Val of the Vikings, too. Hand off to number 12, Deshaun Heckman. Again, senior. Uh, looks like they're going to be keep trying to utilize him in this game, but... I have to agree with you, Chevy. With successful passes like that, you got to wonder if the Vikings are going to switch over. It's going to be very interesting to see. Pitch out to number 12, Deshaun Heckman. And you know, if you've watched the Vikings over the season, 
You'll notice that when number 15, Wes Melanson, um, is in on the field and number 13, Jared Duesenberry, isn't, generally it's going to be a run. And when they bring Jared Duesenberry out, it's most of the time a pass. Flag on the play. And that'll be a block in the back on the Vikings. Vikings struggling with the penalties so far this game. Hand off to number 21, Genoa Melanimi. Again, that's his, that is uh, his first play on the offense uh, of this game, getting the ball. And it's good to see him back out on the field after the ankle injuries. It is very nice to see him out there. Roll out by number five, Alec Craig, looking for the pass, stumbling there, rolling back around, long pass again to number 40, Bryce Webster, just overthrew him, flag on the play. It looks like they're going to call that a pass interference on the Southwood Knights. That wouldn't even close the pass interference. He's pushing to the ball. Not liking that call at all. I see a little bit late. Yeah, I think it's going to be you know, plays like that, definitely, uh, I said earlier, I guess I kind of jinxed Southwood there. Um, looks like referees are talking to the Southwood Knights coach, so we're going to see what they uh, will go with that. Oh, let's walk over here. Right, 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 let's walk over here. over And the call's going to stand. Hand off to number three, Cameron Parker, the sophomore. Early stop there, but he can't get it every time. Third down, Vikings have had a hard time um, with the run game this game. You know, I feel like the offensive line really needs to step it up this game to give uh, Alec Craig, Craig the chance to plant and get a good pass off. Um, I feel like that's part of the reason Valley hasn't had much pass games because he doesn't have that time to... I, I agree. Fundamentally off. wise, um, we are lacking with a pass style offensive line. Long pass out to number 13, Jared Duesenberg. Oh, I'm sorry. That's number 15, Wes Melanson. Um, that's a great pass by Craig 
to Melanson, and Melanson is a sophomore for the Vikings. You know, I believe that's Wes's first touchdown of the season. Yeah, um, the Rochester game, he had a very, very slow start, but throughout the game, he started to pick it up and started making some key plays. Um, you just keep seeing more and more from him, and it's going to be interesting to see how he progresses also. Kick by number 51, Domingo Santiago. And that is a good kick. That'll tie up the score, seven all. First quarter, less than a minute to go. You know, Jared, I've seen these um, score projections for the game. They may, the way that it's looking now, it may be completely wrong, the score projections. I, I agree. Um, I Everything I've seen, the lowest spread was actually Southwood doubling. Uh, the Vikings score, and I do believe that was 42-21 was that score prediction. Um, others have Southwood winning even more, some even 15-13. to I'm sorry, 51-13. to We have number 71, Jose Rivera, back to kick for the Vikings. Um, last game, he was replaced in the middle of the game by Domingo, so it's good to see him back. Long boot out to... And it looks like that fumble will give the Vikings another shot here. That was number 22, Peyton Trexler, on that return, fumbling the ball, giving Valley's offense another chance to score here. That was a great strip there by um, number 44, Jonathan Fields. Fields. And he is a senior, so it's great to see some leadership like that. No, it was really cool because he came in and missed the initial tackle, but still he went after him and ended up getting that strip. Pitch out to number 12, Deshaun Heckman. Using number 21, Janelle Melanimi, to set up a great block there, allowing Heckman to cut it in. And, you know, that's what's going to get those... Uh, big gains is the blocking from your other fellow players. That'll be a handoff brought down quick. Number 28, Jaden Conley on the carry. Southwood's defense does not seem happy to be out on the field. There's going to be a timeout. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Yeah, but we gotta ride the bus back. Yeah. <laughs> Orange 
And we are back from the break. Again, that was the uh, end of the first quarter, second quarter now. Score tied 7 all. And that'll be a great play. Deshaun Heckman rushing in for the touchdown for the Vikings, just kind of moving around, using that field vision that he has as a senior that he's been developing uh, his entire year. It's great to see him using uh, his smarts like that. And I'm just, I'm just glad to see the Vikings so far proving the some of these score projections wrong. I know I already brought them up, but it's just nice to see them already trying. Boy, this team's come a long way since they lost to Western 62-7. Long ways. That's quite a few miles. <laughs> Santiago. On to try the next road one. <laughs> and it looks like the kick is good for the Vikings. Number 51, Domingo Santiago, delivering that kick there. You know, I didn't, I didn't see anything where the Vikings would be projected in the lead. Um, Southwood, from previous games, uh, had been scoring quick and fast, uh, especially in the second quarter. I think, um, I think the Vikings are just really determined tonight to prove people wrong. I got it's right in hard. Oh my god. I can hardly see the fruit. This is a swamp out there. Jeez. <laughs> I've never seen this field this wet. <laughs> Number 71, Jose Rivera on the kick. Vikings looking for a repeat of that return. Oh, little handoff there repeat to number 22, Peyton Trexler. And he's going to go long. Southwood Knights having a great return there. Finally brought down by number one, Dwight Conley, the sophomore. It's nice to see the younger players making the plays. And you know, I said earlier in this game that the Vikings had been struggling on special teams. Uh, it just showed there on the kickoff with just fundamentals, uh, Southwood just breaking through um, and holding their blocks the entire time. Hand off to number 24, Matt Cox. Long pass. Now it'll be a flag on play. I read his lips. That was a makeup call. They're going to call it holding instead of pass interference. Um, against the Vikings. You got to wonder, though, if that could have ended up being strategic. Definitely not intentional. Um, would have it definitely would have saved that would have been a touchdown pass for Southwood easily uh, if he would have broken away there. Again. 
long pass. And that'll be a touchdown for the Southwood Knights. Number seven, Carson Blair delivering uh, beautiful passes right on where they need to be for the Knights. You know, Jared, I see this being a very back and forth game battle throughout the night, and I hope that it stays that way and keeps the game interesting. You know, with uh, quick scores like in this second uh, quarter, you gotta wonder if the score's gonna end up being like a basketball score instead of your average football score. Yeah. That's good. Number 11, Parker Mays on the kick, and it is good. It appears that Southwood uh, has a sword down on the sidelines to give their players a little morale. Hopefully a fake one, Jared. And it's Sean Heckman back deep for Valley once again. And it's the kicker number 11, Parker Mays for Southwood. Boot that went out of bounds. Yeah, where it went out Looks like the Vikings are going to get a better return than what they normally get there by the ball going out, uh, getting the ball at the 35. <laughs> Hand off to number 12, Deshaun Heckman brought down almost immediately after he gets that ball. Southwood uh, breaking through the Viking offensive line. Alec rolling out, trying to rush back, brought down by Southwood. Alec struggling with his normal uh, scrambles like he's been able to get away with this entire season and actually his entire high school career. Yeah, on, on that, Jared, that's like his biggest downfall when he starts scrambling like that. Most of the time, he can get out, but when he gets stuck back there, it's a bigger loss of yardage. It is. He has a tendency to go backwards on his scrambles, which can be very hurtful to the Vikings. And that'll be a fumble for the Vikings. Returning it, and that'll bring out the punt squad. Second time Duesenberry's punted this game. <laughs> That's a great punt by Duesenberry, one of the best of the game, or of his season so far, and that'll be a knee by number 24, Matt Cox, senior. Again, the uh, 
main running back for the Southwood. Quick little uh, pitch. Number seven, Carson Blair. Out to number 24, Matt Cox, showing that he can run very well. As well as pass, number seven, Carson Blair, uh, appears to have w exactly what Southwood needs for this offense. Uh, that'll be number seven. Uh, Carson Blair keeping the ball there, just not quite able to convert into yards. Vikings struggling to get into position. Handoff to number 24, Matt Cox. Southwood just running down this clock here with this run game. Quick, quick pass out to number 21, Zach Ball, who catches that bullet there. Blair looking back for the pass, scrambling like we see Alec Craig doing. Long pass out to receiver. Number 21, Zach Ball, senior for the Knights. Southwood getting dangerously close to the end zone there. Number 24, Matt Cox on the quick rush. Going far, picking up over the first down there. Southwood in the red zone now. Low snap to number seven. Blair. All day to pass there. Two number 21, Zach Ball right in the corner of the end zone. That won't be a touchdown, though. The refs ruled that as out of bounds. The Chip Valley guy just came back and said he was in. <laughs> And there will be the touchdown that the Southwood Knights were looking for, bringing the score to 20 to 14. 
You know, Valley has definitely slowed down so far in this game, Jared. You know, it looked like they were going to be doing a good job here at the start of the second quarter. Um, kind of slipping now. Still only one score behind, so it's not like it's very much of a gap, but they need to turn it up if they're going to do what they need to. That'll be a, another good successful kick by number 11, Parker Mays. And there's that sword out on the field. Quick little pats to the players, give them a good little cheer for great plays there and great kick. John Hector D. Was flanked on either side by Trapiti and Conley. Valley's secondary receivers back further than what they normally would be. Deep boot to number 28, Jaden Conley, the freshman. Running into his own blocker there. Uh, definitely not the, what the Vikings were looking for. That was a very hard hit. And you know it's things like that where you got to wonder if it's just being a freshman and not having the experience or... We just couldn't quite see. Ooh, we're having a conference. I think it can get a little chippy. This morning. Here's another discussion by the referees. You guys got to slow down, I can't keep up. Yeah. My legs hurt. My legs got to slow down. I can't keep up with you. Can you go a little slower, please? And off to number 12, Deshaun Heckman. Bringing in Jared Duesenberry and pulling out Wes. You got to wonder if this is going to be a pass here. You know, so far this game, I can't really tell because Wes has made made the one touchdown there, and we both thought it was Jared Duesenberry off the start, but yep, it it, it was a little confusing. Um, Deshaun Heckman making another quick little breakaway there, and you know I know he's being scouted by a few colleges, so. He might be playing in the next level. It's kind of cool to think of. Alec Craig under center. Hand off to number three, Cameron Parker, the sophomore. Great run there. Great run by Cameron Parker. Number 52, Jonathan Daly, kind of limping back to the huddle there. You kind of wonder what, what happened there. Vikings have the ball. Second five on their own, 48. Duesenberry in motion, which we haven't seen a whole lot this season. Uh, Heckman 
on the carry. Now Craig rolling out for a quick pass to number 40 intended uh, Bryce Webster just not quite able to get out there with that speed. Kind of hard to move there when you're 6'4", 223. It can be a little hard to get that mass moving at quick speeds, especially when you're getting covered. And over on a, I know on a long distance, like once he gets out to open field, he normally can pick it up because he's longer strides. But on that, on the oh, short little jolts, work. it's kind of hard for him to get that speed. Viking is going for it here on fourth down. There's going to be a timeout. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. And we're back. Dusenberry back to punt instead of going for it. Fake punt. That'll be number three, Cameron Parker, rushing forward. And I think they're going to give him the first down there. Getting the first down there for the Vikings. A little smoke and mirrors there. A little trickery. Uh, ended up working for the Vikings instead of uh, hurting them badly, which it has in the past. You know, it's smarter Valley there because so far Southwood's offense has definitely proven what they're capable of and they don't really want to be in that position. No, not at all. I would say that Valley Kings are going to look uh, for a score shortly before the half is over in order to prevent Southwood from scoring. Handoff to number 12, Deshaun Heckman. Fumble by number five, Alec Craig. You know, so far in the game, Valley's kind of had struggles with those fumbles. Yeah, they have. Uh, just having Butterfingers out there on the field. Craig rolling out. Southwood rushing forward. Seeing some great speed by the Southwood defenders. Looks like the Knights are going to take over. Uh, with more than enough time to score if they go 
with their passing game. A little pump fake. Wide open. You know, that pass right there was longer than what most people go on vacations. Uh, long touchdown pass by the Southwood Knights. Southwood showing that they can score quickly. You know, Jared, I may have, may have spoke too soon on the sc score about those score predictions. You might have jinxed the Vikings there. Maybe I can turn it around and say the score predictions are right. <laughs> Getting that kick is good by number 11, Parker Mays. Again, that was just a beautiful pass by the Southwood Knights. Very long pass, but that was great. And it wouldn't have been able to be set up if uh, Carson Blair wouldn't have done the pump fake, drawing in the Viking defenders forward. Uh, great strategy by the junior quarterback. There's a hush over the crowd right now, folks. Deshaun Heckman back to return for the Vikings. Quick little onside kick by the Knights. Giving Valley a pretty good field position. Not sure if the Knights were actually going for the ball there or just not wanting to give Valley the chance to return it. They didn't appear too quick on the ball, so I'm going to have to go with the latter. Alec Craig rolling out looking for a pass to number 40, Bryce Webster. Second time that that pass has been successful uh, out of the four times they've tried it. You know, it's great to see a team using a tight end like Valley has been doing so far in this game. And even in the beginning of the year, uh, Bryce was more of the go-to guy on. Wow. Number three, Cameron Parker breaking away long. Good to see. It looks like Vikings are fired up after that deep pass by the Southwood Knights. They're trying to prove that they can move the ball just as well. And the uh, run game staying strong. For the Vikings, there hasn't been as much pass as I actually intended there was going to be this game. Got to wonder if the Vikings have enough time to score here. Pass out to number 40, Bryce Webster. It looks like the Vikings are going to call a timeout there. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. That's why we're getting static. No, it's we were getting static on my phone. I only heard it once and then I moved my phone.
over who? Who's playing for the championship right now? That's what I thought. <laughs> oh, that's good. And we are back. You know, after that big, bigger run from Cameron Parker there, you want to see Valley do more of that. Alec Craig rolling out long. Again to number 40, Bryce Webster, who catches it off of the tip-off, but a flag on the play. Not sure what that's about. Pushing in the back? Yes, we told him. Pushing in the back as the pass came in. Office passer. So, yeah, tough calling in Southwood. You guys play to the coach. Go tell him. Looks like the pass is on the Vikings. That guy likes to call pass interference. That was almost a pick six, too. No, it was a pick six. I think if he wouldn't have pushed him, it would have been. Looks like that's going to be offensive pass interference there. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what that uh, signal was there, Chevy. Neither am I, Jared. That was a pass. Uh, looked like a little halfback pass trying to go to number 35, Noah Miller, sophomore. Al calling out looking for another pass. Pass intended for number 13, Jared Duesenberry. Pass incomplete, bringing up fourth down. Vikings really need a score here. Southwood doubling the score, score currently 28-14. Looks like that'll be a timeout by the Knights. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to be right back. And we are back. <laughs> Vikings looking to score here. Fourth down. Quick pass uh, to number 40, Bryce Webster. Tackled, uh, tackled by number 20, Blake Mart, senior. which is going to be a first down for the Vikings. No, I'm sorry, for the Knights. Vikings unable to get the first down there. You know, if the Knights have another long pass like they had uh, their last drive, we could be looking at a three-score lead here. Thanks. 
That'll be a rush by the quarterback, number seven, Cameron Blair. And that'll be the end of the first half. Score 28 to 14. A very bad first drive. As we start this second half of play, we have 15 minutes up on the clock. Good to see that young man. So 15. We'll play that end of Jose Rivera lines the ball up for the second half. Yeah, ready to go. We want to see if the ref would catch it or not. I'm sure he would have. No. Yeah, there he is. I'm sure he would have gone away from it. And there's the sword on the Southwood side again. They're holding that up. Uh, I would definitely say they have the gumption to go far here. The little faked handoff back there. Rolling out. Deep, finally brought down by number three, Cameron Parker. You know, from going to a side that had no blockers there, that was a nice play by Southwood to get back to the other side and make a decent gain on that one. Yes, it was. That could have ended uh, very badly right there. The second half definitely a bit chillier than the first. Well, let's see how that will uh, impact players and whether they're going to get cold enough that it starts slowing them up or whether they're going to get numb and we're going to see some bigger hits. I'm I'm really hoping for the second one. Uh, makes the game a little more interesting. Yeah. You know, I saw Southwood warming up a little bit in there right before the second half started, and I saw some stretching by the Vikings, but not very much warming up. And You know, and I think that shows Southwood definitely coming out a lot faster after this half than what the Vikings appear to be. Yeah, keeping those muscle warm, muscles warm really helps you improve and you're able to push yourself more in this colder weather. Third down, a yard to go. Terrible spot. You have that on tape. Mike, and you watch that. Get all fired up. Yeah, I like that. Third down and one. Blair. This time, pro set formation. And off the left side. First down. First down, Southwood. And that's going to be a first down for Southwood. First down. Crowd getting into it for the Knights. Uh, cheering on a little bit more than what we saw in the first half. Um, I would say the Vikings need that too. Great pass out to number 21, Zach Ball. Um, we're definitely seeing Carson Blair having very accurate passes, um, being able to put the ball just wherever he wants it to go. Some talent there. First down. And that'll be a great takedown by number 40, Bryce Webster. Taking down number 24, uh, Matt Cox. That'll be junior on senior tackle there. Uh, I think Bryce is wanting to get the team fired up here. Uh-oh. He's down. You got to call it. He didn't want to. Pass to number 22, Peyton Trexler. Uh, the junior, Alec Craig, trying to make the stop there, but uh, just wasn't able to get it. Came in, not quite getting a hold on him. Uh, going for a shoestring tackle, it almost seemed. And he was get, able to get a lot of yards after contact there because of that. Back to pass. He throws toward the corner. Ball, and it's 
deep pass to the corner of the end zone to number 21, Zach Ball, the senior. Southwood just picking apart the Vikings defense here in this second half. And since it's a whole new half, we haven't really got to see the Vikings um, offense yet, so hopefully they have know what they need to get done and they can turn things around. Let's see how number 11, Parker Mays, the junior, can do on this kick here. And the kick is good. Parker showing that he is very consistent on his kicks. You know, he also has quite the leg on him on the kickoff. Southwood getting ready to kick off to Valley with Deshaun Heckman back deep for the Vikings. Again, number 11, Parker Mays kicking for Southwood. No, he's had a very good night tonight. For he has, being a kicker, he's, he's definitely done a great job. I mean, that was just a very low kick, but the speed behind it, uh, great. Number 28, Jaden Conley having to feel that very far back. A great overall kickoff by Southwood, putting Valley deep in their own territory, maybe the five-yard line. You know, it looked like that ball would have had a little bit more roll. I think it would have been a smarter play there to let it roll into the end zone, so there could have been a touchback there. It was a terrible yard position for the Vikings. You know, and the Vikings definitely don't want to repeat of what they did the first drive of the first half. Um, if they had that here, that would be giving Southwood amazing field position. I'd say. A loss of a couple yards there. Again, I'm Jared Michael here with Chevy Teeter. On RTC TV, RTC TV 4. If you want to check out some more videos, go on ahead and head on over to their website. At www.rtc4.com. I thought that hurricane weather would come in through here. Well, the interesting part of that, too, is not only the hurry up offense. Vikings running a slow, methodical pace here. Alec Craig rolling out, looking for a deep pass to number three, Cameron Parker. And that'll be his first reception of the year. Punt squad definitely coming out here. Um... Vikings needing to get this ball deep, uh, and that will still give Southwood great field position. You know, this kind of reminds me of our first four games of the season here, Chevy. Yeah, they're not looking very good. High punt. 
and fumbled. Why, Dad? He made it across. He's in position. So again, this time three receivers to the right side. Pinnacle and Trexler, two of those guys. And Blair this time, a little hand off. Hand off to Matt Cox, number 24. Senior pushing forward, using that quick speed. Oh, going long, breaking away for the touchdown. Wow, these plays are really going to hurt the Vikings. You know, this is, uh, we brought up score predictions early on, and it, and it looks like they might have been a little accurate here. Yeah. Uh, Southwood definitely coming out uh, into the second half as the team with all pistons firing. Uh, Valley just looks a little slow. We have Parker Mays back to kick. And the kick is good. You know, if this is the way the second half's going to go, Vikings are really, really in trouble. That they are. You know, Southwood's touchdown there by number 24, Matt Cox, definitely showing that uh, Southwood not only can pass the ball and for those touchdowns, but also run it. Uh, I didn't see that, and I hadn't saw plays like that this entire game, but uh, definitely showing that he can break away. Yeah, we haven't seen very much run game from the Knights, but it proves that they are very capable of it. Parker Mays on that little kick there. Number six, Isaac Randall. Picking up the ball and just not quite able to get too far. Flag on the, field. Flag on the play. That'll be a personal foul against the Knights. Vikings getting a great uh, play there at call. I'm not sure how accurate it was, but definitely helps them out. There's another flag on the field. You know, the field has been riddled in yellow, not by Vikings, but from the flags. Ten yard mark for bring up first down to twenty one for the Vikings. Fowler was there early on, and for the first time, we're on thirty four. Seen a deal. What had to wait? Really, when the battle up front. That being Southwood tonight against Fowler. Pitch play goes to Fowler. Beckman turns out the corner. DJ Newton. Beckman's in the corner on the left side. Gain a five on the play. It'll bring up second down. Inside, Beckman by Blake Marks. Vikings struggling here. 
in this new drive. From what I'm seeing in this whole half so far, they're struggling. Alec Craig rolling out. Another flag on the play. Pass out to number 13, Jerry Duesenberry. Oh, there's another flag down there on the play uh, field. That'll be because Alec Craig was in front, or I mean past the line of scrimmage there. Looks like the Vikings are meeting over there on their sidelines, uh, trying to just kind of get back in this game. Makes it second and 16. Third and 16. Third and 16. What's the other signal I got to give? Is there another signal? You say, Dave, did I do that wrong? How did I look when I did that? What's the Four yard penalty? Was it a four yard penalty? Time out. Time out. Another out of the huddle. The other side. All four guys out there. How can it be a four-yard penalty? Yeah, that was a four-yard penalty against Patrick. Damn crazy. That one ref called a timeout for him. He did. Well, he, I think he charged them a timeout since they were huddled up. So well, they might as well take it. Yeah. Still discussion on the field. We don't know what the signal is. He's just going to radio it up here. Yeah. I said, I can't hear you. Both these teams will be interested to see what this officiating crew shows up next week. <laughs> so third down. These guys got a nursing home convention next week. <laughs> oh my God. That'll be a handoff to number three, Cameron Parker. You know, great game, game there by Cameron Parker, but you know, when you're already that far back behind the first flat, the first it's, marker. It's very hard that to do that. You're going to be in sixth place in the conference. What makes it good? This game has really bogged down in the last couple of minutes. The all important fifth, sixth place game. Yeah, fifth and sixth, you go for it, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, you didn't get in by being good. good. <laughs> 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 oh, that's oh, 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 the Andy Pot. Well, that rain affected that. And that was a rolling punt by Duesenberry. And there's some more flags littering the field. Tip Ellie wanted me to call something else here. I'm still good large if I pass interference call. It's not a good shot or both wanted to know what happened. Personal foul against Valley. Hey, this won't give it. And that'll be a personal foul against the Vikings, it looks like. Uh, appears to be a personal foul and a 15 yard penalty from the. You know, so far in this game, the refs has ha have a, had a lot of trouble. That they have, uh, not quite sure. I would say lack of communication down there on the field. Um, it's led to some questionable calls, but we'll give them the benefit of the doubt and. I'd say they're doing a pretty good job. Yeah. 
Back on the way by Hunter hiding of the bike. Close attention on that, though, for Andy. I don't think they're going to stop doing that. Blair down the speed option. Blair darts it up. Blair makes a nice move. Blair hit a 45 yard line. Blow your whistle, boys. Make the first down. We have a three on the play. We'll bring up the third down. Blair wins the option off the right side. Keeps the ball. 1674. You know, Valley's defense stopping them a little bit on this drive so far, just not the way they want to be. You know, I think this uh, is the third, first third down for Southwood of this uh, second half. And Jose Rivera jumping there. Giving Southwood that free first down there. You know, I think part of the reason that Valley's getting all these calls is because they're frustrated that they're not able to keep their streak going. Twenty four Matt Cox stopping there, uh, deciding he didn't like that run up the gut and just running down the line. Able to pick up great yardage there. You know, so far this drive I haven't seen much of a pass. You gotta think when that's gonna be coming into play. You know, I'm wondering with uh the lead that Southwood has if they're just trying to run out the clock here. Um, we've seen that they can score quick and they can score fast. Bullet pass um, popped up in the air. Would have been a great time for either an interception or uh, a catch by Southwood. Soccer over the Again, back to pass. Looks out on the right side. First up five balls. Tackle way by Trapedi, but not before first down. Tanner Trapedi, number 16, the sophomore, struggling. Uh, or, I'm sorry, the freshman. Struggling to bring down number 16, Riley. I'm sorry, number 21, uh, Zach Ball. And there will be a flag on Southwood. The flags just keep on coming. Blair's won that a little more yardage to the stats. Yeah, more passing yardage. He's just passing yardage. He needed five more yards on the record. It was on two. It was on one. It was really on two. And Southwood has put up 35 straight points and lead it by 28. Blair, under center. Hands off to the Cox. Hand off to number 24, Matt Cox. Driving forward. Another marker got the answer. Finally brought down by number five, Alec Craig. Matt Cox running, um, brought down by number 29, Jalen Potter, freshman. 
And uh, we haven't seen much of him so far this season, so it's good to see some very underclassmen getting some work in uh, in this conference uh, play here for fifth and sixth place. To be honest, I feel like um, part of the reason is they're letting the underclassmen come in and try their hand at it is because we're losing so badly. Brought down uh, behind the line of scrimmage by number 15, Wes Melanson. He's all about the numbers. Back to pass. He's open. Looking for ball. Oh, call it. Pass intended for number 21, Zach Ball. Just not quite able to get it there, losing his phone. We're easy. The rain has got our morale down a little bit. We got right, double twin towers. Oh my! Oh my! Oh, oh, quick pass. Field goal. What happened? So there's pass ball intended for number 29, Jeffrey Finnickel. Uh, and, you know, we've seen these bullet passes by Carson uh, Blair. Knight's going for it here on fourth down, deciding why not. Having all the time in the day to throw. Uh, great pass, just a little bit out of bounds there. It looks like the Vikings are going to take over on downs. Uh, still not the best field position. The 138 left to go here in this third quarter. We're going to see if the Vikings can score uh, here quickly. You know, this, that's not the best field position, but it's one of the better field positions that Valley's actually had in the game, so. Hand off to number 12, Deshaun Heckman Sr., getting some good yardage that he hasn't had so far uh, this half. You know that the team huddling up there on the sideline all together. Maybe Jeff Shriver could talk some courage into the team that they're going to be able to push forward in their drives and you, you know, it would improve. Definitely appear the way that they're ponying up here and uh, we're seeing a different side of Valley that we weren't seeing earlier on before that huddle. Deshaun Heckman, the senior, pushed out of bounds there. Hand off to number three, Cameron Parker. Luke Burley on the tackle for loss. 
Zach over the line. He's four suits. And to the fourth down for the Vikings. They have the ball on their own 33. They've got a, a yard to go for the first down. They might as well go for it. Rudenberry is in. University of Tip Valley. They will. And here we have a punt by number 13, Jared Duesenberry. Low snap. And a high kick, kind of opposites there. Vikings touching that ball dead, giving uh, Southwood excellent field position. You know, starting to wrap up the third quarter. It's, the game definitely has turned around for the Knights. And from the early scores from the Vikings, we thought that there would be a little bit of a different game so far. But, you know, everybody has their games, and sometimes it's just they're just not capable of pulling it off. and it looks like that will be a score by number 20, Blake Martz. Well, what happened is the defender was behind him and that ref couldn't see around him. Uh, he was out, but we, we're trying to... Our coaches are telling them. I thought he was out, but who am I? They haven't listened to me all night. Parker Mays attempts the extra point. <laughs> and it looks like that kick by number 11, Parker Mays, is good. You know, it's not really shocking, Jared, to see that from him so far because he's done a great job throughout the game. Yes, he has. Parker Mays is, uh, I hadn't heard of him going into this game, but he's got a good leg on him. Emma Holloway, Lady Temple, Mercedes Hiley, Mary C. Burns, Sterling DeLauder, Katie Jones, Haley Porter, Isabel Wysong, Nikita Jacobs, Anna King, and Lauren Rich. See where you got Also, I take this time to wish Madeline Ball a happy birthday on Sunday. Parker Mays kicking off to number 12, Deshaun Heckman. Uh, something that we've seen him many times so far this game. Line drive kick, um, number 30. John Humes struggling to get the ball there, almost falling down, uh, giving Valley terrible field position. It's hard to judge the ball in the rain. It is. It's rain so hard. Yeah. It's it's hard to do it. Aftermath of Matthew out here. I think Southwood may go to the ball. Ends up on the six yard line with the white team. They take over first and half down. It feels just torn up. We're going to play the game next Again, I don't know if you caught this, but uh, it is now the fourth quarter. Uh, happened shortly after 
or I'm sorry, not shortly, right after uh, Southwood scored there. So. Southwood just shutting down Vikings' running game so far this half. You know, I just haven't seen the team that I've from Valley that I've seen the last three games. You know, I saw a big improvement and was hoping to see a lot more drive and skill, but against a harder team, it, they just haven't shown their uh, ability to push themselves and work on that. Um, Oomph. Yeah. Um, you know, I have to agree. I thought I saw uh, definitely what we needed in that second quarter of this game. Uh, Vikings scoring very quickly, uh, stopping Southwood, and then it's it slipped since then. Um, Vikings having a hard time getting mistakes out of their head and just repeating those mistakes. And it's just creating a kind of quicksand type moment where the more they're struggling against it, the more they're sinking down. Craig going out, almost picked. By the Southwood Knights. Looks like uh, Southwood's going to be putting in a new quarterback, deciding that without much time they've got left, that Vikings uh, don't really have a chance of coming back. That'll be a handoff to number five, Gabe Lloyd, freshman. So, Southwood uh, Knights definitely trying to bring in some new players and some new blood, get them some experience. And you also got to remember that we have the first round of sectionals next week. So, they're wanting to keep their players fresh. Um, definitely risking an injury this late in the game would not be good for Southwood. That it wouldn't. Pitch out to Gabe Lloyd. Again, that's quarterback number 10, Jackson Simons, the freshman that is the new quarterback. That'll bring up fourth down. You know, 49 and 14, it's not looking very good. No, it's not. Got to wonder if they're going to go for it here. They don't really have a reason not to. Freshman Jackson Simmons <gasps> pitching it and just brought down hard. By number 15, Wes Melanson. Yeah. 
That'll be a turnover on downs. Vikings taking over. Fourth quarter play, the Valley's trying to bring their backups in offensively. Yeah. Noah Miller will now man the quarterback position. Looks like Vikings are substituting in some uh, secondary players. Quarterback number 35, Noah Miller, the sophomore. And you know, you got to remember, he'll be taking over for the Vikings next year. Handoff to number three, Cameron Parker, sophomore, who's been in most of this game. You know, it's awesome to see, even though this late in the game and that score being so such a drastic difference, it's nice to see him pushing forward like that and still giving all his effort. Luke Prater, the wide receiver to the right side. Noah Miller, the southpaw quarterback under center. Miller hands it off on the right side. Running forward and getting the first down. And that was a handoff to number 45, Dakota Gaff, the freshman. Um, letting go of the ball there at the end, even though it wasn't ruled a fumble, generally not a good idea. Uh, sometimes the refs won't be that nice. It's best to just hold onto that ball tightly. Uh, almost like it's one of your kids. Vikings struggling on where the line up. Handoff to number 34, Jace Potter, freshman. You know, even though Southwood has brought in their most of their secondary offensive team or defensive team. It's nice to see the younger players from the Valley side actually pushing forward. It's like we're having better drives now than we were prior. You know, and I think that shows that Vikings uh, will be set up pretty well in the future. Um, right now this year in the season, this is the end of the regular season here. Um, so we'll be starting sectional. So Definitely, Vikings are looking forward to that future. Scores around the area and stats and facts. Stats and facts. I like that sound of that. Handoff again to number 34, Jace Potter. Just driving forward. You know, you got to wonder if uh, he's gunning for maybe a varsity spot next week. You know, I believe if he shows what he's got in practice and can hold it up over the week, um, we might just see him next week. Yeah, because he's making very decent games. And off to Conley. And Conley. Noah Miller hands the ball off, too. Gain of five on the play, second down and five. Also, Jayden Conley. And that was number 28, Jaden Conley, freshman, on that handoff there. Freshman dress, maybe? Noah Miller. Hands it off. Left's on the right side. Noah Miller hands the ball off too. Driving forward is Jason Potter. Jace Potter, okay, Potter again close to another first down, a gain of six. Another drive from Jace Potter. Several men on the Several lights on the check out as he lost his helmet. It looks like that's a helmet there that came off, so he's going to be out. Vikings pushing for a score here. I know it's not going to put them in the lead, but puts them just that much closer and not that big of a loss. And that was number 30, John Humans, the sophomore on that carry. 
No hurry, spot the ball. That's yeah, the they don't know the clock's not running. Check in. They're the ones running the Yes. <laughs> 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 Check in. But they should care. Also, for one of the new bands, trying to get as many kids names as much as can. Joe Meadows has come in. There's a name we've heard in the past. Meadows. That'll be a fumble. Southwood getting the ball back after a good drive there from the Vikings. It's bad to see. You know, they were just battling that entire time to chip it down that close and finally having to cough the ball up there. Um, almost like shooting themselves in the foot multiple times on that one play. Yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of fumbles by the Valley offense tonight, and it's kind of disappointing to see that. Just give a save to give him some points. We had 15 guys to have one point. Now we're down to a Yes. Yeah, they don't know how many's out there. Never, this be a handoff. It looks like that'll be a safety. Vikings getting a nice two points there, and they'll be getting the ball here. We're going to take a quick break as they're changing balls around, and we'll be right back. Punt. <laughs> Should be a punt. Oh, really? In high school? Okay, I did not. Oh, really? Well, I haven't seen Southwood Point yet, so I'm kind of curious. <laughs> nope, doesn't look like it. Huh. And we have number 11. Parker Mays on the kickoff there. Number 16, Tanner Trapiti with that reception there. You know, as we're seeing this game wind down, I feel like we're seeing all the players wind down also. I agree. Definitely a loss of morale here on the field. Players just looking slow and not pr quite prepared, almost like they're past their bedtimes. And you know, a bunch of freshmen out on the field, we very might well be <laughs> past their bedtimes. Looks like there's going to be a timeout for the Vikings. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. And we are back. <laughs> Number 35, Noah Miller. Deep pass to number 29. Jalen Potter, freshman. One of the best plays of the night by the Vikings. And that's from their J second strings. Yeah, I was say, that's their JV squad there. Um, and that was an amazing catch by uh, 29, Jalen Potter, facing backwards and had to twist around to get it. So it's amazing that he was able to keep his hands on it. Clock running. Get that clock running, he said. He's still waving his arm. He's going to have a connection. We don't need him to have a connection. Beaver Valley, 16. Miller again under center. 
22. And a handoff on the right side. This pot in this time takes inside the 20 yard. This pot are up the right side. So I know a snap today, you know. We were both checking a beam field across from each other and he said, I gotta get going on this because we're gonna be out for that game soon. You know, four on the fly brings up the second half. It's pretty good. You're gonna see that. Fine. Well, certainly had to be happy with that. Down to four and a half minutes to go here in the fourth. The outcome of this one has been pretty much decided. All we have to decide is the final margin for Southwood. But Valley trying to get a late score. Probably trying to get a late score. Struggling on the run there. That was number 34, Jace Potter, the freshman, on that carry. Some kids not getting into house tonight if you don't appreciate it. And any group that doesn't listen to you, get in that group over there. So <laughs> they won't hear you. But. Under center. Thank you. Yes, Miller. Hands it off. Who has to miss him? Gaff gets inside the five yard line, diving four. Touchdown, Tiffany Valley. The two they have. Miller hands off to Dakota Gaff to. And there is a another score for Valley, making the lead of the Southwood Knights just a little less. Santiago on for the extra point. Number 51, Domingo Santiago on the kick. And the kick is no good. Vikings showing that they're still in it here. Um, 3.46 left to play in the game. Score 22-49. Uh, score predictions were off the, the large ones. The spread isn't quite what the large ones were. We're about right mid um, where score projections were. 51 Domingo Santiago kicking off. Kickoff, uh, number 15, Carson Heath on that return there, and he is a freshman for the Knights. Back at quarterback number 10, Jackson Simmons, the freshman. Fumbled ball there. It looks like Valerie recovered the ball there. And they're excited. Yeah. So there's three minutes left in the game. And if Valley keeps pushing it, there's a possibility we can get close. 
Definitely make that point margin not quite what it was. It makes it look a little better. Uh, maybe scare the opponents for next week. Valley lineman running across the field. Uh, obviously didn't know he was supposed to be in on the play. Number 35, Noah Miller rolling out. Pass intended for number nine, Bryce Fisher, the freshman. You know, Valley's bringing it close to the end zone again. Hopefully we see another score. Vikings pushing towards that end zone. First and goal. That'll be another handoff to number 34, Jay Spotter. Looks like that'll be a touchdown by the quarterback, number 35, Noah Miller. He said, keep it going. Making that <laughs> score just a, that gap just a little bit smaller. He's <laughs> to <laughs> Number 51, Domingo Santiago, coming out to kick. And you know, he's just a freshman, so. That's good. And the kick is good. Vikings will be kicking off to Southwood. 152 left to play in the game. Now, Jared, I'm expecting a, like an onside kick or a swift kick here, and Valley's going to look to get the ball back. I can definitely see that, Domingo Santiago kicking, and a nice little squib kick. 
And a flag on the play there. That uh, would be because the ball rolled out of bounds. And giving Southwood pretty good field position. Yes. It's interesting to see here some of the players because they keep going. Yeah. We just keep playing. Of course, that big rally against the Giants in game four. So, the medal of that team, of course, game one tomorrow night at Wrigley Field. Let's see how the Vikings' defense can do here. Brought down quickly. That was number 16, Riley Weitzel. On the play. Now we're seeing Southwood just ticking down the clock. Last play of the game. Camden Tucker on the game clock down to for the Vikings. I have the ball 39. Play clock to 25. Just have one kneel down and one handoff, and we should be done with this one. Stack we have number 40. Play clock down to 10, 30 seconds on the game clock. You're all right. Same as looks back and says, yeah, I can take the snap now. Four seconds left on the play clock. Now it'll be a quick little run out. Oh, he's going to go all the way. Going far. Jackson Simmons showing that he can run there. And it looks like that's the game. Score 49-29, Southwood in the lead. Um, some impact players for the Vikings. Number three, Cameron Parker uh, for some great offensive and defensive plays. And number 12, Deshaun Heckman for some pretty good runs. For Southwood, we definitely had number seven, Carson Blair. Some amazing passes by Carson. Um, right to the point in bullet and long passes. Um, and number 24, Matt Cox. He had a really great breakaway run for a touchdown and also a very steady um, continual run there. Also, the entire receiving team for Southwood, just being able to be spread out, um, each one being an impact player, uh, definitely not making it so that way Valley could key on certain players and just leaving Valley really spread open. Um, Southwood able to pick apart Valley's defense because of that. Uh, thanks for watching Tippecanoe Valley Football on RTC TV, and check out www.rtc4.com for more videos.